Like now you need What do you mean whoa? Whoa. Someone said whoa. I heard that. So 91 and 92. And, uh, and I remember him so well. And I remember that he was sitting in my class. And I remember it was very impactful because he would, you know, he would talk about his experiences. And, and it's interesting in life, you know, if you haven't seen Steve Jobs commence, commence his speech 2007 in Stanford, if you haven't, please, over the break. Because Steve Jobs will talk about connecting the dots in your life. And it's so wonderful that I'm, you know, I'm 63, and it's so wonderful when I look back and how you connect the dots of your life. You know, if I didn't walk there, and if I didn't meet this person, well, it's very much that way with Anthony. If I connect the dots back to Anthony, uh, it's all the way back in 91. It's amazing what has transpired since then. We've worked together. Uh, we, I, the holiday doesn't go by that we don't wish each other a happy holiday. Uh, he'll, he'll text me and he'll say to me, how are you? Like out of nowhere, you know, or he'll say, you need to do lunch. And I go, okay. It's always sushi. So, you know, I hope that you, you know, develop some sort of, you know, connection in your life as Anthony and I have. Uh, Anthony was a student in marketing class, and uh, he is a graduate of CBA, which is Trevelli now, and graduated in 2004. He also graduated with his MBA from Fordham, so he's an alum, and he graduated in 2007. He started the Entrepreneurship Society in, two, was it 2007 as well? I uh, started out in 2004, but graduated in 2007. Yeah. And his background is, is telecommunications because he's always, you know, he's always had a, a, a full-time job, but it's interesting how he's like the quintessential entrepreneur. He always has an idea. I always get a, a text, he goes, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? And I, I don't know how many companies. The last time it was seven. So I don't know how many he has now, but I'm sure he'll share that with you. I asked him if he would come in here and talk about motivation because I think it's just, just an important component of what we do as leaders and what we do as young professionals and even as professionals. And I just, I just hope that you really sit here and you just take in, it is, they are words of wisdom because it really is where Anthony comes from. He comes from experience and he really has that mindset, you know, that entrepreneurial mindset and also that passion and what we were talking about, that motivation. So here's what I'd like you to do. You don't have to take notes. I'm not going to test you on this. All right? But I really want you to just get involved with this. I, I have a feeling after this going to make this a little interactive. But really listen to what he's saying because this is a practitioner. This is not an academic. This is a practitioner. So he does. He does. So please, help me welcome Anthony Labasco. So Dr. G asked me to come in and speak about uh, how a positive attitude and overcoming failure and using failure as your fuel to be successful and to achieve success. And what was interesting is that she approached me back in January to speak and I had just been coming off of getting my footing after I, I lost my job last year in 2018. Uh, only two months, it was the end of January, February, and part of March, but still, it had a very big impact on me. 
And as an entrepreneur, and you'll, you'll see this presentation, a lot of lessons I've learned. So when I look back on this, I look at a guy that was you know, overcoming a lot of challenges, a lot of pain, and just motoring through it in a positive mindset have got me through that. So if the lessons I've learned, it's going to be entrepreneurs or aspiring entrepreneurs are in the class. Excellent. Anyone want to share? Or what is it, you, you guys? Don't tell too much. Uh, well, I, I, you know, I do a lot in technology, as Dr. You were saying before. I do things in telecommunications. I worked in Cisco Systems for almost five years, too. So when it comes to technology, that's what I do. I'm part of a startup right now that does technology, selling enterprise uh, solutions for cloud, things like that, which is awesome. And, and, and a last professor that was sitting here was talking about passion. So you're gonna hear me talk about passion a lot because passion is really what it comes down to, the fuel for getting past any adversity and actually realizing your potential too. So, you know, but that being said, my mindset last year it was very interesting. So anyone know what mindset means? Your, your idea, I'm looking for an exact definition, so don't be afraid. The way a person thinks. Sure. So it's really a set of attitudes that a person will have. The way a person thinks, that's the mindset, right? So, you know, I know I was, I was searching for images for this lecture today, and I came across this one, and I love, the, I love the idea and the metaphor of you can't choose, your cards are already dealt, so you can't really choose your cards, but the way you play your cards is really how you go through life. So I know you, you've heard of Randy Pouch, and, Pouch, and you, you speak about him too. Do you guys know who he is? Anyone? Anyone tell me? He was a professor at Carnegie Mellon. Yeah. So he was a computer science major at Brown, then was a professor at uh, Carnegie Mellon, and he lectured too. But I, I really thought, like when I saw the name, I thought it was a, um, a poker player. So of course, it's gotta be a poker player. So I randomly looked them up and was blown away by what it meant. So Randy Pausch was diagnosed with uh, with pancreatic cancer back in 2006. 2007, he, he accepts doing a lecture at Carnegie Mellon. And right before the lecture, a couple of weeks I think it was, they gave him a terminal uh, diagnosis. They said, Randy, you're gonna have three to six months healthy living, then it's all gonna go downhill after that. And he said, well, I have a good excuse to not do the lecture, but he did it. And he called it the last lecture. And it was just amazing. So when you look at mindset, when, when you think about it, right? You know, the sky is not falling. Look, I, I, I'm Italian. I automatically go from everything is great to boom. Everything's terrible, right? That's just the way that we're wired sometimes, right? You know what I'm talking about. Totally. And, and you know, it's really not like that. So let me share with you guys something. Um, I had a lunch today in Manhattan, a business lunch. That's why I dressed up. And I was waiting for a, stu a, a guy, one of my partners, meaning one of my service provider partners. He's actually a Fordham student, alumni. I don't know if you know him, Marty Martinez. So Marty Martinez didn't show up for lunch. And I'm with the client, and I'm sitting there, and we went to Fresco by Stados. Have you been there? The place is amazing. So I'm calling him, and I'm saying, where, where are you, Marty? What are you doing? I get a text after him. He died last night. Had a heart attack. Who would have thought, right? Around probably my age, he was class of 99. I don't know if you know him, but... I want everyone to just, I want to do a moment of silence for him because, you know, I was affected. He's part of the Fordham community, part of the Fordham family. So let's have a moment of silence for him. So when you think everything, the sky is falling, 
It's the worst thing that can happen. And what's really amazing is that you take these things and you take in, you take a, a, a situation like that and you know you can either A, just scream and say, oh my God, the sky is falling, it's terrible, or do something positive like we're doing right now, talking about everything. And what's really ironic is that I have these slides about the sky is falling, what's the worst thing that can happen? Yeah, I'd say that's, that's pretty bad, right? Um, you know, so, so when you really think about it, it could be a lot worse. And, you know, with that said, just take a deep breath and relax. In through the nose, out through the mouth. I mean, that's really what, what, what I've learned, especially over the past year, because, you know, I thought that things were really bad, and they weren't even close to being bad. But that's how you stay motivated, too. So, you know, I say always focus on good because, you know, as I was saying before, you can easily focus on the bad when things, when you're saying, man, this guy's late for lunch, what's going on, I'm not going to get this deal. Instead, focus on, wow, I have the opportunity to actually have lunch with a, with a, with a big prospect and I'm doing the right things. I'm having a great meal at Fresco by Scott O2. So, you know, it's kind of like, you don't want to be that annoying, always positive person because we all know them. You don't want to be that person. But I'm just saying, don't be that Debbie Downer either. Every time something bad happens. So, you know, it, it enables you to think differently, right? So when you really think different, right? I mean, you see this is Apple. This was their slogan back in um, uh, the 80s. And what's, what's really funny is that, you know, in your, in your introduction, Dr. Duke talked about connecting dots. And, you know, Steve Jobs is one of my heroes. He's many people's heroes, I'm sure. But he always said that you can't connect the dots moving forward. You can only connect them moving backwards. And it's so, it's so important to do that. You have to know yourself. And, you know, when it comes down to it, it helps you navigate through, you know, making decisions and doing things in your life. So understanding who you are, when you, things come up about where you're going to go, what you're going to do, knowing where you were kind of helps you navigate where you're going. That's just my experience. So, you know, I'm going to connect the dots too, and I'm going to talk about a little bit who I am so you guys know. Um, but you, you probably don't know that I was, my mother walked me down to the fish store when I was 12 years old, and I was a fish guy for, I was 21, right? A fish monger, as you call it. And I grew up on Long Island. I went to Chaminade High School. Not that you guys can hear my accent, but I'm a Long Island guy. That's two or that one. Um, <laughs> But, but the interesting thing about, you know, about working in a fish store, you don't really think about, you're like, oh, fish store, who cares? But you know what? After six months of working there, the, the owner of the store came up to me and gave me the key to the store. He said, Anthony, come in anytime the alarm goes off because there was no wireless in the 80s. So you actually had to go in person and turn things off. But at that moment, I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I had no idea what the word meant. It took me a long time to figure it out, but I knew at that moment that's what I wanted to do. And that's followed me throughout my life. And that's something that's really important. So knowing yourself is, is so important to everyone, right? It's so simple to think about it, but you know, anyone wanna share what they've done growing up? I'm not encouraging people to work, share experiences when they worked at five years old or anything like that, but anyone want to share what they did when they were younger in high school? I uh, worked at Dunkin' Donuts for two years. Oh, <laughs> no way. Listen, you, you could be a person that owns a chain, owns many chains of Dunkin' Donuts, but how'd you like it? It was horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Where, where'd you grow up? Uh, New England, like Boston and stuff, the Boston area. 
they do a really cool, really funny skit on SNL about uh, Dunkin' Donuts. I don't know if you saw it. <laughs> yeah, Bobby Moynihan, and yeah, it was really funny. Um, but you know, everything does matter, and you know, one of the things also is that you know, I went to Fordham, obviously talking to my intro and stuff like that. But one of the things I did at Fordham Graduate School is that I started the Entrepreneur Society. Do you? They still have it on campus here. Is anyone involved in it? No. So I take this class, and it's a business writing class. That I took. <clears throat> End of the class, everything's great. I get an A, and then the te I go up to the teacher, I see me nail one, and he said to me, I don't know. I was devastated. I went to, I went to get my MBA at Fordham to learn about entrepreneurship. I really wanted it handed to me. But you know what? Entrepreneurs don't get things handed to them. You have to figure out, you know what was handed to me, which was great? My first true obstacle. And from there, it was kind of like, you, 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 you know, taking a deep breath and relaxing and saying, how do I make this a positive thing? So I looked on campus to see if there was an entrepreneur club, because everyone in this room, let's just say, like the way I look at it, is that within Gabelli, there's gotta be other like-minded people. So bringing them together in a, in a forum like this was awesome. And that's, my, that's how I really first got into entrepreneurship. You kind of think outside the box, right? You have to really, when, when you have an obstacle, you have to think outside the box. And there, no one tells you how to do that. And there's no recipe for how to do that per se. But sometimes you can't, things are just not linear. They're, you know, you have to go outside. So these are some of my influences. And, you know, anything here with familiar, you guys are born in what? 99, 98, 2000? 2001? 2002? No? What year? Anyone? What's that? Okay. All right, cool. Well, there are some things on here, I mean, obviously, that kind of predated you, which is kind of scary, but, um, you know, Y2K was a big thing for me. But then you look at the different generations, right? So I'm not going to go into every single ge generation, but you guys are known as digital natives, millennials. In this case, it's generation... Uh, Z, then you have Generation Y, I'm Generation X. But my point is, is that everyone has their own perception of how they look on life. I look at things differently than you do. You know, we, we have the same eyes, we look at things. But based on our experiences and based on, you know, what's going on, and that's so important because when you're, when you're working for someone, when you're interacting with someone too, you may think that, oh yeah, they, they think the same way I do. No, they don't. And take some time to learn about the people that you're talking to and meeting with and trying to win over. So this book, Mindset, right? I'm not gonna give a lecture on this entire book. Anyone know this book at all? Anyone? No one, it's okay. I just kind of came across it recently too. Um, but this book is mandatory reading at Microsoft. In fact, you know, the CEO of Microsoft has made it mandatory for every employee to read this book. And it's by Dr. Carol, Carol Dweck. And, you know, how it relates to this lecture and, you know, what it is that we're talking about here is approaching failure. So you can approach, according to you, According to her, you will look at failure in two different ways, either a growth mindset or a fixed mindset. So a growth mindset means that, okay, I failed, but let me, I learn. I'm gonna learn from the failure and move on. A fixed mindset, you see things black or white. Oh my God, I just failed this test. Oh, I'm dumb, I'm stupid. I mean, 
Yeah, you guys are laughing, you know. I, I, I had the fixed mindset for a long time too. But it's just a different way of thinking. So I really encourage you guys to read this book. Um, you know, I'm kind of getting into this a little bit more as time goes on. But any questions so far? What I hate about these things is that I talk way too much. I want you guys to be able to feel comfortable to chime in. So, are you a fixed mindset or a growth mindset, right? I mean, I think that's what you need to ask yourself. And really what it comes down to, if you haven't figured out already, the growth mindset is the good one, right? The fixed mindset, not so good. And the growth mindset, you're gonna fail. And you're going to, you're gonna fail and it's just how you're able to, when you fail a test, do you wanna learn from it and score a better grade moving forward? Or do you just wanna say, oh my God, that's it. I'm done with school, end of story, I'm gonna move on. No. It's just a different way of thinking. So, you know, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about you know, me losing my job last year and, you know, how I found myself. But, you know, I'm not going to really spend a ton of time on this, but, you know, she also talks about Dr. Dweck in Mindset, talk about pushing yourself to the limit. Now, you guys may not think much about it, but who here sometimes feels that they push themselves to the limit? Good, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel that the only way, the best way to push yourself to limit is to, um, in my case, when I lost my job, things were manifesting. All my, I had a whole lot of ideas and businesses that were in my head that were manifesting. So I continued, instead of looking for a new job, I focused on developing these businesses and ideas and blogs and things like that, which in hindsight, I know was challenging to do, especially the family, supporting family, but it was the right thing to do. So, you know, it forced me to say what's, what's most important. So, you know, my family is number one, always, right? And, and you'll appreciate this next slide. Full fridge. My, one of my bosses always said, you know, when you have a full fridge, things are good, right? So think about it. Think about a full fridge. See, you see a lot of milk here. I have, I have, I have kids that are two daughters that are eight and six, so they drink a ton of milk. But when you look at it, this makes me so happy when I have a full fridge. I know everyone is going to be well fed and eating and stuff. Maybe it's eating. Italian thing, but you know, it's really funny. And, and passion, that is what is most important to me. Because really when things, when, when the shit hits the fan, you wanna be behind passion, and you wanna be behind something you love. Because when you love something, when you are passionate about something, you can get through anything. And, and in, my, in my case, I took all my passions in my head. Some people would call me kind of crazy, but you know what, sometimes you're gonna have ideas. Have you guys heard of a vision board at all? All right, so I built this vision board in my, before I knew I was gonna lose my job probably a month before, I said, I have to get this all down in a vision board so I can just stare at this constantly. And this is kind of what I did, right? And Adam, Adam taking a video right now, don't see me over here too. See, you see the shirts over here, right? Adam, Adam is, is, is one of Dr. G's former students. He and I had worked together on Neighbor Bee and uh, it's just amazing because when you look at everything here, it's good to see it down because that's a roadmap of what you want to achieve. But I want you guys to to see what's on top, right? So last year is my mantra. So I, every year I have a mantra. So keep pounding is, is, what's my mantra for last year? Anyone know where that came from? So 
key pounding came from a guy named Sam Mills. He played linebacker for the Panthers. And unfortunately, he died as well, I think, from pan pancreatic cancer. But he was like a little taller than me, which is not say much. But he was 5'10", a linebacker, and he was a walk-on. So he had to walk, he had to basically work 10 times harder than everyone else in order to get on the field. And he would always say, keep pounding, keep pounding. So before every Carolina Panthers game, they have a big bass drum and they, boom, keep pounding. They hit this, they hit this thing, and everyone runs out on the field. I absolutely love it. And it's such a great, so when things get really tough, you keep pounding. So, you know, what you can see here, this PC vision board, this is what I did last year. In addition to finding a job and having a job for a little while too, I built all these businesses and blogs and sites and branding, very right? personal branding is, is very big for me too. Um, that's what I wanted to do, and that was not easy to pull together. Um, so that's my vision board for this year, right? So you can see it's much simpler. Um, Libpack is what I do right now. It's a tech startup, and uh, it's just amazing because had I not done everything and all my passions last year, I wouldn't be doing stuff with Libpack. I wouldn't be working and 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 conquering the IT community at LiveCat, which is awesome. So, you know, when you think things are not, when you think things are just going down and you think the sky is falling, keep pounding. So, can I ask you a question? Yes. How long have you kept vision boards? Actually, like two years. <laughs> two years? Yeah. I mean, I've always had, I've always had themes um, every year, but never really did vision board. I think because um, I probably should have had it a long time ago. Well, I think you did. I think you just didn't write it down. Yeah, I agree. For a long time. I agree. It was pretty much like if I did have a vision board or something, it was like something I wrote down and really never thought much about it. But I formalize it now. But a vision board doesn't necessarily have to be about your career. It could be that you'd like to buy a car, or you'd like to take a trip, or you'd like to, yeah, right? I mean, how Yeah, I mean, you know, for me, I, 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 I say my vision board, you know, family, happiness, health, friendship, 5K, yoga, you know, things like that personally. But, you know, professionally, it's so important for me. So I'm at that point in my life. But she's right. I mean, you guys may want to travel the world, do certain things, accomplish, uh, you know, a bunch of things, and you can put that in your vision board, too. Does that make sense? All right, so, so my grandmother and then my mother always says that you were exactly where you were supposed to be. Do you know what I'm talking about? Right? Because how many of us are always think about, oh, man, I should be at Harvard, I should be at NYU, or I should be somewhere else, right? Or I should be living in Europe, or... No, you shouldn't. You should be exactly right here. Be, be grateful about that. And be happy about that. And be, you know, be at peace with the fact that you are where you want to be, and there's no problem with wanting to be somewhere else. Just aspire to that. The other thing that really gets me... Um, what was so important to me is opportunities, right? And that represents a window of opportunity. And every day was a new opportunity and still is a new opportunity. So in some cases, when you have opportunity, take the plunge. It's, it's scary. You want to get out of your comfort zone and you want to do something different. And you want to take the plunge to do something when... When I, I met my wife in 2008, and Dr. D and I had been working on a uh, neighborly project, and I was failing significantly. I was living on my own, uh, li oh, of course, living on my own, but I was living alone. I was single. I was like, wow, 
they have a lot of money. I'm like, wow, this really stinks. And then my friend said to me, Anthony, why don't you try Match.com? I didn't, I've never done online dating. I've never had a problem with, you know, meeting people, but I kind of did. It's always good sometimes to do the opposite of what you think works, or actually doesn't work. If you're doing something that's actually not working, do the complete opposite of that, right? You know George Costanza from Seinfeld. You look at my vision board here. I have George on the uh, top here, right? That's why I have him there. And, uh, you know, basically it's kind of like, I, I go on match, I married the first woman I met on match.com. I have this wonderful life. Because do you know why? When you fail so much and you actually do things and you know, failure enables you to actually know what it is that you're looking for. You know, George Costanza, he said, you know what? I've done everything wrong. Uh, I want a tuna sandwich. No, you know what? I don't want a tuna sandwich. I'm gonna have a chicken salad sandwich. That makes more sense. I'm gonna do the complete opposite of what I want, right? So, you know, in that case, just, just think about that too. So, you know, and be committed to what you're doing. So many people, especially your age too, don't really understand commitment. I'm sorry, but you know, it took me a long time to actually understand commitment and what that meant. I'm not saying from the personal side, I'm saying when you're behind something, be committed to actually failing. So Neighbor B, when I failed on Neighbor B, I was committed to the learning. I saw it through. I probably saw it through too long, but you know what? It is what it is. And I, it led to so many wonderful things. It led to working in Cisco Systems. It led to meeting great people. I mean, this fine young guy over here to you, I met over the summer for uh, to relaunch Neighborly. It's really cool and uh, gave us a really good opportunity. Unfortunately, we were dead on with it, but what are you going to do? So, in some cases, we as entrepreneurs, we jump off a cliff. And then we build the parachute on the way down. And to a lot of people probably looking at me, you're probably saying, you know what, you're crazy, Anthony. You crazy. But you know what? When you when you think about it, when you look at it, I mean, that's really what you do. You kinda take the plunge and you think about how to how to make sense of it and how to actually make it all work. I'm not encouraging everyone right now. You know what? Anthony said, I'm going to quit school. I'm going to... I'm not saying that at all. I'm not saying to do anything extreme. <clears throat> I'm just saying that if you are considering doing something, you're on the edge. If it's positive, then take the plunge. What do you have to... What do you have, really have to lose? You're young. I'm twice your age. More than twice your age. And I have a lot more risks. Right? I have kids. I can be your I can be your father, right? I'm not I'm not old to be your father. Right? And you know, that comes to a lot of responsibility. So, you know, when you actually do make these decisions, you're not only affecting yourself, but you're affecting people around you too. And also inspiring people. And that's really important. And you'd be so surprised on who you're affecting. And if you can dream it. You can do it. That was Walt Disney, right? So think about something. I always wanted to be an entrepreneur when I was 12 years old, and now I am. I may not be on the cover of a magazine like I always thought that I'd be at this point, but you know what? I've, I will continue to keep pounding and keep doing what I'm passionate about, and I encourage you guys to do the same too. So, you know, sometimes you got to take a few steps. In order to take a few steps forward, you got to take a few steps backwards. And, and don't beat yourself up if that's the case. If you know that you want to get here, but in order to get there, you have to kind of go backwards, then boom, then you're over here. That's the way it goes. And that's not a bad thing because you're going to get to the same destination.
get out of your comfort zone, right? I mean, I've said that before. Don't be afraid to do that. And honestly, when you get out of your comfort zone, you are, you are stretching yourself. Dr. Dweck in Mindset says you have to stretch yourself. Last year, I stretched myself so far to the limit, I almost took a breakdown. I was going crazy. But holy cow, once I got out of it, I was so excited. It's so awesome. And, you know, other everyone's different in terms of how they deal with things. And you know what you're capable of, what your limits are, and what your max is. Push yourself past it. See what happens. Be comfortable. It's okay. Not too comfortable. Can you sit up? Thank you. Just sit up. You're going to have to sit up. Thank you. <laughs> do we want to do a stretch? Everyone stand up and do a stretch? Just sit up. Thank you. So, you know, when you do all that, then you elevate yourself. And that's the key. That's the, that's the key to her book, is that when you stretch yourself, elevate yourself, you end up elevating yourself and getting, becoming a great person that you want to be. Again, come back to the mindset, right? So, you know, she talks about, you know, fixed and growth mindset, and it all revolves around failure. Because it happens. Failure is always gonna happen. It stinks, but it does. Who thinks they're not gonna fail? Anyone here? Anyone here think they're not gonna fail? Who actually likes failing? You like failing? <laughs> I do too. I gotta hear this, okay. I just find that I grow. I mean, are you serious? I mean, that sounds that's a really good perspective. Yes, yeah, exactly what I'm saying. That's great because that's a great, that's a great way of looking at it. And you know, when you when you fail, depending on how you fail and things like that, what I'm saying is that you look at the worst case scenario and you think the sky's falling. If you're failing, nine out of ten times, it's not. So you know you, you, you do you do grow. So you want to get beyond what it is on failure <coughs> because it's a part of life. And you know, as, I'm sorry, what's your name? Rand. 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 It's a weird name. So as Rand was saying, in order to grow, you have to fail. And then when you fail, you learn. And when you learn, you grow. That's really. I would say if I had one slide to keep in here, that would be it. Right there. I could end it right now. Great. Nice to meet you all. So, you've heard me talk a lot. I love this video. Have you guys seen this video before? Anyone? So, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not really a prominent person like Michael Jordan or any close to it. But did you know that Michael Jordan got cut from his high school basketball team? Right? And like, you'd be so surprised of how many people in society that are known for doing some great things have failed horribly. So, it's only two minutes. This is like one of my favorites. This is such a great thing.
30 years old, he was left devastated and depressed after being unceremoniously removed from the company he started. A high school dropout whose personal struggles with drugs and poverty culminated in an unsuccessful suicide attempt. The teacher told him he was too stupid to learn anything and that he should go into a field where he might succeed by virtue of his pleasant personality. Rejected by Nick and recording studios who said, we don't like their sound, they have no future in show business. His first book was rejected by 27 publishers. His fiancée died, failed in business, had a nervous breakdown, and was defeated in eight elections. If you've never failed, you've never tried. <coughs> Pretty awesome, what do you guys think? Any surprises? Sick, right? I mean, when you think about it, um, you know, what, what a guy like Abe, Abraham Lincoln was able to accomplish after what he, every setback he had, amazing. Now, those are outliers, if you will, right? Those are people that achieve great success, but many of us in this room can achieve a lot of great things as well that people won't get the notoriety we won't have it on YouTube like this but or at least most of us won't it's still really telling it's it's pretty cool so you know courage in in, in my opinion and Winston Churchill do you guys know who Winston Churchill was yeah some yes some no Winston Churchill was the Prime Minister of England during World War II. A great man, he had so many challenges. Um, you know, England was bombed significantly during World War II by, by Hitler, right? And uh, by the Germans. And, uh, you know, he said that real courage is going from failure to failure and having enthusiasm and doing it, right? Listen, again, you don't want to be that crazy person that's like, yeah, everything's great. Yeah, I love feeling. Oh, it's great. No, you want to be that person that goes like, man, I just got my butt kicked. Like, like, like I constantly do, but yet get up, wipe yourself off, and continue moving along. And that's how you achieve great success. And whatever success is, what you have defined. However... I'll tell you, I'll give you, if you guys want to take notes, you want to have three ways of definitely failing in every aspect of your life, do these three things. And the first thing is to <laughs> complain about everything, right? I mean, it's, it's so funny, but it's so, it's so true. We all know those people. We've all been those people. Oh, this sucks. This stinks. You know, this and that. I'm not gonna do anything to change it, so you complain about it. Then you blame others for what you're not accomplishing. Oh, you, it's not my fault, it's your fault. <clears throat> I have an eight year old and a six year old. They love blaming others for what they do, but they were eight and six. You know, they're not 20. So, you know, that's kind of expected at that age. And then the last thing is never be grateful, right? That was something we talked about, Dr. G and I. You always want to be grateful about what you have, right? I'm, I'm grateful to be in here and have the opportunity to talk to you guys. You know, you know, hopefully a lot of you are paying attention, but even if not, still, I think it's, I, you still have to be grateful to have that opportunity. <clears throat> you know, Dr. E also asked me, she said, Anthony, what gets you out of bed? What motivates you? 
you know, one of the things that motivates me, I mean, number one, obviously, is, is family, is opportunity. And, well, the, the opportunity to provide for my family, but I look at opportunities, and there are still opportunities that you take and other opportunities that you're going to miss, right? And, you know, when I look at, when I look at my missed opportunities, I look at, like, why didn't I buy Amazon when it was 200 a few years ago? And I was that guy that said, okay, hmm, maybe I, I, I literally had money to invest. So I said, I'll invest in gold instead of Amazon. And gold at the time was doing really well, but then it just went downhill. Amazon went from here to like here. So, you know, I do sometimes look back, but, you know, things get foggy sometimes and you're not going to be able to make the right decisions and you're not going to be able to see the opportunity sometimes but you never want to look back it's a card my mom gave me after i graduated fordham and that card you know don't look back this way it's done you know this already happened don't look back it's not an option anymore and that's the thing right i mean many of us especially when you're younger you're kind of like wow why didn't that happen? It's done. Bye. Done. Who's got a time machine in this in this room? Anyone? <laughs> I don't. I, I wish I did sometimes. But my point is that you can't go back and change things. Nor do you want to. I saw an interview. Do you know who Mark Messi is from the Rangers? So he was getting interviewed by the Yes Network. I figured who it was. That interviewed him that said, what would you change in your life? And he said, he didn't even think about it. He said, you know what I would change? Nothing. Because every failure that I've had, every challenge I've had has molded me into who I am today. And that's so amazing because when you really think about it, even if you want to go back and change things, that whole process of learning, as you were saying before, is that's priceless. That's what makes you who you are and the opportunities you're able then to execute on. So, you know, again, passion gets me out of bed. You know, everyone's <coughs> talking about passion, what it is, but in my opinion, passion is like a force field. Because when you're behind something you love, and when you're doing something you may not love so much, but you have a passion, it's a force field for bad things in, in, that are around you and stuff because you know the good in following your passion is so good. My passion is here, technology, family, entrepreneurship, and then these are my, I think it's so important to find passion, find your passion. So, you know, knowing yourself, and I've come up with this after I failed so many times that I had to figure out what it was to, what's really going to realize my goals. I'm your passion. So we're all here for, I, I speak in Dr. D's class a lot about entrepreneurship, starting business and things like that, but this is one, one thing I love talking about is there are five traits of entrepreneurs. And you know, I found this on Forbes.com. So when you really think about it, when you look at this too, you know, the first thing that they talk about is follow your passion. How many more times are you going to hear someone say passion, passion, passion? But let me tell you, passion is everything. And you have to spend the time realizing your passion. You have to. And, you know, anyone know who Gary V is? Yeah? I know Adam knows. Um, Gary Vandershock, he is, um, he's a big time entrepreneur, has accomplished a lot on the social media side, on the social side, pioneer in videos and blog, video blogging, things like that. But he's now one of the top lecturers in the, in the world. And he talked about how cheap, it's cheap, I mean, skills are not cheap. Skills are still great to have, but passion is priceless. You can always work on people that have passion. 
that love what they're doing. You, just, you know they're always going to elevate themselves. They're always going to stretch themselves because of what they love to do. Second thing is resilience, right? Because, I mean, all you people that want to be entrepreneurs, you slash 95% uh, failure rate in starting a business. And I'm not, I'm not discouraging anyone from doing it because I'm still that guy to try and do things, right? But use failure as a fuel to achieve success. And that is so important. So you can, if you do fail in your business, don't get discouraged. Learn from it and then parlay that into something you can be successful with. You've got to have a foundation, right? And you, you have to have a strong sense of yourself. And whether that foundation is your family, your friends, whomever, your, your professors, uh, you know, in your world, in my, in my world, with my kids and my wife, right? That's my foundation. That's my solid foundation. Flexibility. So, you ever hear of Hotmail? Anyone? Some? So, Hotmail was like, so back in like 1995, <coughs> before you were born, so these guys had an idea about, um, they wanted to create an online project uh, management company. But there was no such thing as webmail at the time. So in order for them to communicate the email with one another, they had to go through their exchange server, which means that Big Brother can, can view what they're doing, see what's, see what's happening. So they wanted to bypass that. So they came up with Hotmail in order to do that. No one really, no one did that back then. So it took off and they sold it to Microsoft for 600 or so million dollars. But the point is that you want to be flexible about things, right? And then have vision. Who's heard of MySpace? Anyone? A couple of people? Yeah? So I was in a bar with one of my buddies when we had this great idea about this company called MySpace. And that was in 2000, right? When you guys were born, right? I'm sitting in a bar, I, I drew the site map, and it's exactly what my face is, right? So vision without execution is called hallucination. Thank you, Thomas Edison. And that's it. You, you get a great idea. You always want to outpour the ideas, break them down. And sometimes people are, you're going to have the same ideas as other people. That's good, that's okay. You just do it better. Don't be discouraged if someone else has an idea that you don't have. I mean, who would have thought? I never would have thought MySpace would be null and void. Who, who would have thought Facebook? Who, who would ever think now Facebook, you live without Facebook? But they overtook MySpace, in fact, MySpace probably doesn't even really exist that much anymore. Google and Yahoo and all that stuff, right? Final thoughts. Just be inspired. <clears throat> always, always look for inspiration. Because being inspired is, is really important and keeping your mind open to that too. You know, be kind, don't be an ass, because it really comes back to you. Like, if you're not nice to people, like, you may not think it's not a big deal right now, you're in this classroom, but, but pretend you're in my shoes in June, in Jubilee, and you're running into, I'm running into you, and I was an ass to you 25 years ago, and now you're a CEO of like a big time company that I work for. And I was, I was an ass to you. Do you think that's gonna be, I'm sorry, do you think that's gonna be a good thing? I'm not saying you would fire me, but I'm just saying that <laughs> it's, you never know. And you don't wanna always motivate and be nice because you think someone might have a vested interest in your life, but you know, being kind helps with karma. And 
Karma is a very powerful thing. One of my friends from Florida, I was working for a company back in 2010, and he was out of work. He has three kids. He was like, Anthony, do you know anyone? So I got him a job at, like, at the company I'm at, 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 that I was at at that time. I don't know, maybe six months later, didn't think anything of it. He then gets me an interview at Cisco Systems. He's like, well, you hook me up, I'm gonna hook you up. And it turned out the guy from Cisco was the guy we went to Fordham with too, which really all came full circle. But my point is that be selfless, because you never know how that's gonna all kind of come around. Just be a nice person. You know, live life fully. You know, it's very simple. It's a very simple thing, but live your life fully. And you know, <coughs> dream big, never lose hope. <coughs> And remember, you're always one decision away from changing everything, right? I mean, if, if that girl told me not to go on Match.com, I would never have the wonderful life I do right now, right? Gary V again. Anything is better than zero. I probably say this like five times a day. You know, because I, I was always that, that person like, okay, I'm gonna go work out today. All right, well, I have to go, I have to work out for three hours. No, if you work out for 15 minutes, or I'm gonna study, okay, what do I, am I gonna study for three, four hours? Okay, oh, no, I don't wanna do that. Study for 15 minutes, it's better than not studying at all, and that all adds up. And, you know, have the courage to try again. And, you know, I, I, in my other lecture, I talk about uh, outliers, but, you know, at the end of the day, you want to become master of your craft. And in order to do that, have you guys heard of outliers at all? Malcolm Gladwell, what a phenomenal, nice, what a phenomenal book. I encourage you all to read that. In fact, read that before you read Mindset because it'll blow your mind. Because really what it comes down to is that, and it, it actually ties into this too, like, you know, in Mindset, all right, let me take a quick, quick poll. Who thinks if you're born with a 175 IQ, you're gonna be more successful than the person with a 130 or so IQ. Anyone? Now why? Why did you come to that conclusion? Because it's about work ethic. Exactly, you can work hard to, you know, you can work hard to make up for, you know, any shortfall that you might have. And also, seizing opportunities, that's so important too. I can go on forever about that, but I won't. Um, all you need to know here is it's a lot of commitment to become a master of your craft. He says 10,000 hours, broken down full time, five days a week, eight hours a day. That's like what, five and a half years. So, you know, realistically, it takes 10 years to become a master of your craft. <coughs> Just be you. Don't be afraid to be yourself because. You know, a lot, of, a lot of us, we all try to be someone that we're not. And that, and that authenticity is really everything. You guys, are, you guys are born, and you were born into the digital age, right? So Adam's taking a video of me right now. I'm being myself. You can either say, yeah, this guy, yeah, he's, he's okay, he's a little weird, whatever. Or he's a good guy, very inspirational. But regardless, I leave this, I am myself. I am who I am. You don't want to worry about what people think of you. You want to constantly be yourself and be authentic. Because when you're on video, people will be able to, as Gary Vee says, they have, he's got, people have the biggest BS radar in the world. They can, they, can, they can basically say, you know what? You're being fake. You're being fake. Or this person being real. So just be you.
And then, you know, stay positive when everything feels like it's going to fall apart. And that was almost every day to me last year. Everything I felt was going to fall apart. And thank God my wife is nothing like me because she's more of like the relaxed one. So we counterbalance each other, sort of. I'm probably still over, but still. And this is the whole key here. This is all a journey. We are on a journey. I'm still on a journey. You're all on a journey. And as Steve Jobs says, the journey is the reward. So thank you. That's it. Um, you stay after. You stay after. You stay after. Okay, the um, Listen, I hope you got something. You know, I hope you got something here because I have to tell you something. You've heard passion how many times today? And it's not just, it's about how to live your life. These are life lessons. This isn't just about, you know, where you find yourself in business. How the hell do you want to live your life? You know, and it should be authentic, and it should be you, and it should be a life that is passion, that's filled with passion, and you shouldn't regret anything. It was supposed to happen exactly the way it was supposed to happen. Okay? All right, Kevin.